What's up, my folks? How's everyone doing? I hope everyone's doing well and not in any danger right now. Uh, you probably get danger of running over trying to get toilet paper right now, though. Only danger you're probably in. Uh, you know, before we get started, I want to thank Canine Performance Athletes for the for the intro. Thank you. Uh, and I want to tell everybody that's emailing me. I haven't really had time to go through a bunch of emails and shit. I just got done packaging my meat, and uh, I know it sounds funny, but it's not a joke. I, 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 we've had to put up meat for the year, and now I got a pandemic going on. If I don't cut my fucking grass, I'm going to have a rattlesnake pandemic. That ain't even no joke now. Um, so I'll be doing a lot of yard work the next week. I'm probably at least a week <laughs> to get all this yard work done. And... <clears throat> So I haven't really had time to mess with anything. Today was the first time I really had time to sit down on the computer for a few minutes. And I just was sitting on the heating pad trying to email, read people's emails. I missed a bunch of phone calls. You know the deal, you of me. I'm terrible on that shit. But uh, I will try to get back to you if I catch your stuff. The people that are asking about the, the hides, yeah, I still got some hides. I have to send one order out. I'm going to send one more order out Friday to my buddy in Boston. And um, whatever's in there Friday... I will uh, send those orders out and then I'll be done. They kind of went quick. Uh, so that's what I got with that. Not to mention a bear got about 30 of them off my hill where I like the tan hides at. He found my spot and robbed me. But uh, <clears throat> so that's where I'm at with that. So if you got your uh, order in there Friday, you'll get hides. And hopefully I can pack enough of them in there to make it worth your while. And you guys that's been asking me about the hides... Just knock the salt off. Hit them with a water hose. Knock the salt off against a tree and let them have at it. Then when you go, when you're done with that hide, put it up in a dry spot, like an old windowsill in the barn or something, the garage. Uh, the ones that you're storing, I, I put plenty in each package. Now, so I've already got one sent back to me. It looked like it was full of baby oil. They were tripping out. I didn't put enough newspaper in there with it. But um, so you guys, when you get them, make sure you take them out and put them in an airy spot. Now, when the ones you're not using, leave the salt on them. It ain't gonna hurt them. Them things are full. Them are real good and green and full of oil that'll be fine okay but uh and they'll be fine until you're ready to use it and then knock the salt off of them but uh let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> breeding and stuff and this this these dogs and and everything most of the guys that watch this i know my folks are, are woke i know all this shit and y'all know all this shit but i mean we get a lot of new people in here we're here to help new guys and and a lot of you new guys are bit by the bug you may be in a, the game six months maybe a year maybe two uh, I want to give you guys this. This is to you, okay? These, uh, even for the guys that's been in the game, you know, under ten years, okay? You're just starting out. You didn't have really. Uh, you might have. Let me go ahead and explain something to you guys. I've been around all kinds of different dog men. I've been hanging out with dog men literally on the regular since I was a teenager. Okay, the first thing you got to know about dog men is most of them have a big ass ego. I'm telling you right now, most have a very big ego and are full of shit, okay? This is kind of a wake-up call to you guys. So listen to what I'm telling you on this, especially if you're new in the game and then, you know, you read the books and you read the, the websites and the fucking Facebooks and all that shit. Just remember what I just said. They got egos and they're full of shit. And there's another thing. They're not only straight full of shit, they straight fucking lie. I've seen dog men lie about other people's dogs. I mean, people you would think that were good people. Let me explain something, too. Just because a motherfucker's got a lot of money, he's got nice shit, been successful in the dogs, does not mean he's not slap-ass full of shit and will lie to you. You understand what I'm telling you guys? Now, another thing y'all need to understand is dogs get paper hung. I ought to do a whole video on dogs that I know of paper hung. Dogs I've bred and let out that were paper hung. I mean, people do it for all kinds of reasons, from they don't want, you know how their stuff's working, to they just, uh, they're, they're, like I said, their ego's big, they want to make their bloodline look top superior, so they will even add actually other shit to it to freshen it back up and show it as being inbred on theirs. I'm telling you, I, I know all these things happening, I know it's, ha I've been in three decades of fucking with these dogs, I've seen everything I'm telling you happen. I'm not telling you anything I ain't seen with my own eyes. Okay, people breed dogs they're not supposed to breed. Hell, I'm guilty of that one. When that hurricane hit when I was a teenager, don't you think my ass wasn't going up to Mary Urban's with a $100 bill breeding some of the finest 
fucking stud dogs y'all ever seen. Some of the best producers ever walked. Now, I already knew the deal. I had to keep that shit in my yard and I'd never get papers on it, but I didn't care. I didn't hang papers on them either. Out of all them dogs that I bred, I only sold three dogs, three prospects out of them, and I never gave papers, and I never told the people how they were bred. And out of those three dogs, two of them went to make private yards that they still, well, one of them I know is retired. I don't know about the other one. And another one went, you know, all three of the dogs made titled ranking dogs, and one of them they hung papers on, and there's a whole line down off that one today. Now, I ain't here to bow anybody, hustle up, or tell anybody to get bullshit started, because that's what I'm saying. I ain't into that part of it. That's y'all's business. If y'all don't know, it's your business. That's what you need to learn in these dogs. That's what I'm telling you. Before you start thinking you're going to go out and be the next Maurice Carver, learn the game a little bit. People are sending me breeding charts, like uh, breeding coefficient charts and gene charts. I know I might just be a dumb swamp honky, but let me explain something to you. There's two ways that them charts might help you, okay? There is some things you should heed to. There's one thing I know for a fact you should probably pay attention on that breeding chart when it tells you that taking the son back to the dame, the male offspring back to the dame, you're going to have a 90-something percent, 90-something times greater chance of getting bad recessive traits. Now, I do agree. Everyone I've talked to that's been honest about it said the same thing. You get those bad recessive traits. What they don't tell you is what the fuck a bad recessive trait is. Okay, it can be anywhere things from organs failing when they're eight weeks old. You done raised some beautiful little puppies, you think you got it met, and then all of a sudden motherfuckers start dying like they're getting parvo or some shit. It can be uh, it's right in your face, you know, bone structure problems, you know, undershot, overshot, blah, 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 deaf, blind, uh, things like that, you know, extra toes, shit like that. Uh, Court screw tails, you know, bad short barrel chest, you know, all kinds of different things. Fine bone, you know, they can go fine bone, brittle boned on you, okay? They can also have shit wrong with them inside their head that you can't see. Like when people tell you, oh, he's a squirrely dog. When the old timer tells you squirrely, you better listen to that motherfucker. That don't mean he's going to get out there and start trying to crack a nut in the middle of the woods. That means when you're handling that motherfucker, he's liable to latch onto you and start turning up on you. Okay, a squirrely dog's mentally fucked up. I don't like no squirrely dogs. Okay? Those are bad recessive traits that people don't tell you happen in these dogs. I'm trying to save you guys heartache and trouble. Go ahead, breed you up some real heavy bread, fucking stupid bread shit on inbred shit and give it to your best friend that's got a brand new baby. See what happens. See what happens if that fucker goes squirrely on you. I'm just telling y'all the truth now. I don't bullshit about dogs. I don't. That's a dangerous thing to do in these thing, dogs. Okay, this here is the little pup off of uh, Rusty. I did y'all were asking about scene, and I figured I'd throw it on there and show while we're bull skating a little bit. You know, those are things you need to understand. Now, as far as that breeding chart helping you, if that makes you feel better and keep your dogs better and raise your dogs better and all that shit, it's going to help you. Okay, that's how that's going to help you. Or if you're a mad scientist and got a lab and a petri dish and use DNA and all that can really pull it down to each gene and each DNA encode in each dog, then maybe it'll help you. But for the regular world, the rest of us, this is how the real world works. Okay, you can take two litter mate brothers, okay, and you can breed them to a bitch. One of them to a bitch and get a litter of puppies that'll have certain traits, certain level of traits, certain things. You know what I'm saying? You can breed that same bitch back to that brother to the other one and get different traits, better or worse. Different levels. Very few times will, will that shit match up like you think. Okay, consistency is what we all try, strive for. But you can have it both ways. Okay, people don't understand paperwork to be breeding it off of. If the map is not correct, it'll lead you into quicksand. I'm just telling you, and a lot of these maps are not correct, okay? Unless you bred it yourself, unless you were there, you don't know. You do not fucking know. And same with titles. If, unless you were there and you know, then you've seen something. And then you only seen half of what you know. Well, man, look, I'm, I'm going to lay out some pedigrees and show y'all some stuff. And tell y'all some stuff. All right, my advice to y'all is get in your dogs. Study your dogs. Be honest with yourself about your dogs. Evaluate your dogs and keep meticulous records. I've been keep, keeping records of dogs for over 25 years. About every breeding, every time I worked one for a show, every time I went to the catch pen and uh, 
you know, I was big time going to the catch pens when they were legal. I mean, it was in Georgia, we were running the catch pens. This was one of the last hoorahs in the catch pens. I was going every month. Okay, I had dogs pretty much going every month in that pen. And yes, I mean, that was back before I saved my wretched soul and I was gambling and everything else. So, you know, I mean, I was a serious contender and competing with my dogs. It was the only thing we had going around there. So, let me explain something to y'all. I see, remember again, like I say, dog men are full of shit now. They'll tell you some bullshit, okay? People have been asking me, like, oh, I got, these are, this dog right here was a dog that I purchased back. It was a dog I bred, and um, I purchased the dog back, and um, for, I'll tell you why I purchased the dog back. Here again, about titles, you don't know if you don't see them, about performance and shit like that, because they had this dog's brother. And they ruined that dog on purpose. So when they went to the catch pen, another boy had some of their offspring was using to make it look like their offspring was far superior to this shit. And this shit was just would have fucking walk. It did walk all over it. That's why I went and bought this dog back from a boy. I bought him back at 15 months, and this was he was 17 months old when I started his uh, preconditioning phase to work at the pen. He was a hard, hardcore, solid bulldog already at 17 months old. A very, um, a very hard hitting, very powerful, very what we call a barnstormy type dog. I had a bunch of them. Okay, now that's what I call woo woo. You're gonna get into woo woo in the south on them hogs now. Want you're going to. I learned how to breed dogs different now. Then I, I, you know, I breed for different than what I did then. I breed for a dog that's. A little more technician and we'll get on the hog snout much more and i like a, a real hard mouth uh snout head type dog to get on the hog and stay out of trouble i like a real smart hard mouth rough dog um gameness is a given but this was a what they would call a barnstormy type dog real straightforward hard mouth he get on the nose real good too but um now you, like I said, dog men are full of shit. I keep meticulous records and when dogs fall apart, when they don't, and all that. And I'd like to thank the dogs I have are just as tough as anybody's. But let me explain something to you. This is a pre-keep. Now, this dog had already been messed with and he was in, at weight. You know, real, he was soft, but he was still too close to the weight that I wanted him to, because even at the catch pens, you wanted to weigh him. Um, he starts out four miles, started his feet keep. Uh, four miles an hour, four miles an hour, four miles an hour. Uh, next day I weighed him. Then I gave him two miles and 30 minutes on the mill. He's been pad toughed every day. He's got two bad spots already. By now, already got two bad spots on his feet. He was fat and soft. Now these are meticulous records. Uh, the next day he pulled six miles, one and a half mile hours. And then... Oh, in the evening, I'm going to walk him another half a mile, pad tough, cleaned his ears, brushed him, rubbed him, pad toughed him, pain gelled him, toweled him off, and spent time with him. Uh, the next day, I just rested him, I pad toughed him, brushed him, rubbed him down. I walked him and uh, let him run on the treadmill for 11 minutes. And I washed him before and pad toughed before. Um, the next day, he walked 5.5 miles. This is two different ones. First time he did four. This is then an hour and a half. Then he's 15 minutes on the mill, patch up, blah, 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 wash, everything else. Like I tell you, and then it just goes on and on, and I keep all my records, okay? And by the end of that 14 days, I evaluate the dog where he's at with the key, okay? What he's doing, what he's really doing, okay? This is 14 days on work. Now, he's done walking a bunch of miles now. I didn't bullshit on that walk. That wasn't walking on a mill. That was actually getting out and putting my, not a fucking stepper that counts steps, but real linear miles by the fucking road markers, okay? Um, and then like, okay, you can put notes down. I advise you doing these kind of notes, you know, these kind of programs with your dogs. Every time you mess with them, because then you can find out what, what works with certain dogs and what doesn't. And I found that if my dogs, my real hardcore barnstorming dogs were in shape, they didn't need but a 34-day keep to be good. Anything after that, I started losing on them. You ever seen them guys that start, uh, they, they put too much work on a dog and lose on them a lot of these dogs you can get where you need to be in 34 days if you do it correctly you evaluate the dog now that's 34 days plus you know your first 17 days you know so really it's more than 34 days but what i'm saying is for the fourth day he had two bad spots on his pad already ready he was 39 pounds and soft by the fifth day all four pads were bleeding after six miles now that's six miles on the sand road pad tough before and after rub down with sheen 
The dog is cape taking keep well. That's some dog food stuff. The seventh day started treadmill work, walking it. Uh, played uh, fastball like he liked to play the ball, and started strength training. Okay, and and then you go into your well, you keep your your thing, and then you go into your feed, and then you go into your phase two of your other work, and then it then you'll see how the how the when you get a dog to a certain point, you go down. You regress in your time and your your intensity of your work until you get there for the last couple of days. People don't tell you that. They make it sound like they're working their dog 16 hours a day on a motherfucking... I mean, come on. You're going to... He's going to fall apart. You're never going to succeed. He's never going to look better than, than, than average. You're going to leave him in the gym. I mean, all, it doesn't matter now because you're not doing it in front of a thousand people, but... You know, it used to take that shit seriously when there was grandstands full of people watching your dogs. And you're, you're crazy if you didn't think people would try to get a leg up on selling puppies by making one of your dogs look like shit. Okay, I'm just telling you. I, or sound like shit. I'm just telling you. Dog men are full of shit. Okay, now let's talk about breeding. Breeding practices. Because there seems to be this... First of all... You can't make chicken salad out of chicken shit. I don't care what mayonnaise you put in there. They got to have good traits. They got to be producing good traits. But you got to know what you're looking at and know what to expect of certain dogs. Inbred dogs usually don't perform near as good as crosses. They're usually straightforward, dumb, uh, might not have a lot of wind. They might be pretty, just what I, all the stuff I was telling you, the bad traits. You get it on inbreed. There's one trait that you got to have on an inbred dog for breeding. He's got to be overproduced. That's a given if you want to breed him. But you want him to be game. You want that motherfucker to be game. It's about breeding game dogs. Guys, I have lost friends and ruined friendships because I would not breed certain dogs. I had certain dogs and wouldn't breed them, wouldn't let them be bred. Just because they were super bad and I, in my heart. Just because I hunted with them didn't mean they were game. Didn't even mean, I, a lot of dogs I knew wasn't game. I just knew they was game enough to catch the hogs. I, I mean, but a lot of them woo-woo dogs, man, if they don't have their way and they don't get that hog caught up and stopped and that stock hog gets back out in front of them again, they will fucking get frustrated. They will stop chasing him. I'm just telling y'all the truth. Okay, you got to have gameness. All right, now Buster, I mean, when I started breeding Buster, we had plenty of studs to breed too. I bred him for a reason. All right, Buster was off Scully and Half Pint. Scully's off a of Brutus Two and Cookie. Half Pint's off a of Popeye and Dirty Sally. Brutus Two is off a of Popeye and Nyla. Cookie's off a of Popeye and Coco Beware. Dirty Sally's off a of Lobo and Peaches and Cream. So in the first three generations, you got Popeye in there three times. That tells you right there he's inbred on the Popeye dog. Okay, well what's Popeye? Popeye, if you go back in him, is line bred on the Turtle Buster. He's 84 times, uh, Buster's 84 times Turtle Buster. I got a problem outside. All right. So anyway, let's get back to this. So we find out Popeye's line bred on Turtle Buster blood. Means there's every dog that goes back in and goes into the Turtle Buster dog. All the dogs down in come from that line. Okay. And then you start saying, well, we know that that was though what he's inbred on, but what's the crosses in him? And you start looking and you start seeing, well, they're all... Turtle Buster strains. They're all going back in the Turtle Buster blood. So it's all from the Turtle Buster line. Different families now. Different, Some different dogs, some inbred a little bit. But for the most part, there's a few different strands in it. Now, like any other thing, different strands of blood, you know, different things. But it's basically a line bred Turtle Buster dog up to the Popeye dog. Then they took the Popeye dog and triple bred him. That's, he's bred double bred right here. And it's a dog, you know, a daughter back off of him. So he's inbred on the Popeye dog, and he's a, he's a line-bred Turtle Buster dog, inbred on that, with all the outs back into the Turtle Buster stuff, too. There's a little bit of Jeep, Red Boy, and Rascal in there, not much. So, on a dog like this, you wouldn't expect to go back to his sister and have good stock. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if it was a bunch of different blood in behind them, then you breed him back to his sister, you got a better chance of getting something that's usable. I'm just telling you how it works. Okay, a lot of people are buying real heavy, heavy bred dogs and think just because they're cold or whatever, they're still going to produce. It may or may not. If the dog can produce, he can produce. There's no dispute in that. But for the most part, it's a risk. You may get one or you may not. I mean, I'm just telling you all the truth. You got to keep records and see what you're looking at. Now, off of this dog, as your, your average Joe would look at him and say, 
Okay, and performing and say, well, Buster, he was kind of dumb. He didn't really have all these great traits. Well, I didn't expect him to have. He's an inbred fucking heavy bred dog. He's 84 times turtle buster. He's game to the fucking bone, though. That's the dog you cross out to get your crosses. You see what I'm saying here? Like, I keep records on all of them. Like, straightforward, 17 months, straightforward, broke tooth, game, needs win, say, uh, 23 months old, caught hog, good, hot, hard to handle. That's a negative to me. A plus one, very deep game, good cross out, good, I can't read what that word is. Oh, drive. So, he had good qualities to build on. You can't make chicken salad out of chicken shit. I would have never bred him if, just for his paperwork. You understand what I'm saying? Now, when you get down in the years off of it, now I have seen dogs, I've even let dogs out that, are so far back in the pedigrees, five, six years later, I don't know how they got there. You know what I mean? I got bust. This is as about as far back as he goes in most of our pedigrees. You know, we try to keep it up close if we can. But we're down to a quarter of him here. You see how this works? That's an inbred dog. Another inbred dog. Back to a loose line bred dog with the velvet. Velvet ended up being a super good producer. I mean, no doubt. Like, um, shockingly good. <laughs> Let me put it this way. This breeding right here was done twice. That breeding right there would have gave them a producer record. Okay? There was enough points in those two dogs, in those two breedings with them two dogs to, to make them a producer. You know what I mean? Recognized producer. Now... When I bred Buster to Velvet here, we still got good traits. This was a very good one. She was a good one. She was very. She was had the straightforwardness, but like she caught a lot of mouth, a lot of roughness, a whole lot. Very rough, hard mouth dog could have used some intelligence. The Walker was giving us very good, intelligent, good, smart dogs like I like that were still real deep game and intense and good, like. Really nice usable dogs that anyone could use. These are good friendly dogs too. They're not dangerous. They're not squirrely. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't, if these right here were heavy bred as this, I would never have inbred the velvet. But it's a loose line bred. There's like, it's all the good shit that I like, you know? So that's why it happened. I, it's, uh, you know, it's got a bunch of the outlaw, the niggerino, the banjo, the Miss Kim. And the old Florida bullies and stuff. That's what this bitch is bred down off of. So she's a loose a loose Eli Carver bred off of really good stock bred back. To, you know what I mean? So it's not real heavy tight. And what it seems like is she's a very good producer. Very good callus type dog. Producer type dog. So I knew that when I bred Buster back to this stuff. When I Rita, which is Rusty's sister. I got a very good dog. I'm, now, I'm not sure if them dogs are game yet. We don't know, but the, the, everything else seems to be on track with them. You know what I'm saying? So this seems to be my cross, my hit. So instead of inbreeding, like say when these pups, say these females, because both of these are females, come up and they're great. We wouldn't breed them back to Rusty. We would take and go back to Buster with some Frozen. You see what I'm saying? Bring it up there to keep it there. That's how you keep your family by you know, keeping the family breeding without getting too tight. Because too tight is not good. You will pay the price for it. You will pay the price for it. You'll lose friends. You can, it's just a, it's a fucked up situation. Uh, Georgia and I, you know, we used to never tell nobody how our dog was a bred. I mean, it just trips me out that Georgia was telling people on the line, on the thing. So I might as well show y'all. But like, Georgia and I had a conversation about getting this a little thicker. And we both agree. Just with, with cowgirl, it's a mistake. We don't know if it was a preemie or from too much. Even with this being loose line, you can still have bad traits pop up. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You got to experience the dogs and look at them before you know. And you cannot go by shit. Look, all I worry about in these papers is here. You know what I'm saying? Really, I only worry about from here. I don't really worry about none of this shit back here. Like people ask me, what do you think dynamite is? And it's who the fuck knows. Either way, it don't matter to me. Either way, on any of these dogs, it don't matter to me from here up. You know, that's what's producing for me. So it's what you get that's clicking. That's what you got to figure out how to keep it going. Because you can inbreed it too much 
and ruin it, or you can outcross it and lose. It's a fucking hard gamble. And sometimes, I mean, it's just a gamble, just like these dogs. Like, I'm going to show y'all something. Like, we bred these dogs right here. Like, like we bred Buster to Bubbles, right? Hodges Bubbles. And we had a litter. They were pretty fair little dogs. You know what I'm saying? Um, they could use little things and all that. You know, it produced one of the smartest dogs I've ever seen. My house dog, Khaleesi. That's her. She's a, just a brilliant ass dog. So, and they they were fair on every other thing. Deep water game kind of dogs. You know, good dogs. So I decided, well, look, let me try it. I'm going to bring Buster back her and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Because the Bubbles dog was already really too inbred to breed on. You know, inbreed on. She was already double bred off the Abe stuff and all this shit basically went back into Tom 2 too. So she couldn't really, I mean, it wasn't smart to inbreed on her too. So I inbred on that and um, we had a hit. Now, there were late starters, but it was a pretty good hit. It was, a, I put late starters, crazy, not squirrely. That means they wouldn't, I wasn't ever scared of them to bite me, okay? They had good mouth, fast, deep game. That was a pretty total average of the litter was had those traits that didn't get stolen a bunch of them dogs got stolen from me uh, i let too many people see my dogs i took them to the pen too many times you know what i'm saying and they will get gone on you so but you know you can figure out how to breed them and keep them back you know what i'm saying and and, and go in it without ruining them but you can also fuck up a whole litter real quick and don't get if you're going to inbreed dogs keep them that's my advice keep them Go through them and make sure you're on the right track, okay? Because you can really ruin your name. You can ruin somebody's life. Fucking, you know what I mean? These dogs, we all have to breed them. We all have to be serious about this shit. This is not a game. It's not a 15-minute hobby. You get into these dogs like this, it's a lifer thing. It's about life. It's not about breeding enough dogs where you can throw enough shit on the wall and hope something sticks kind of deal. You kind of be selective about it and breed the one and be honest with yourself. A lot of people can't sit, they can't sit through a line. They have to mount around. They're going to be flavored a month every fucking year. Every time you see them, oh, I ain't like them dogs. They ain't work out. I got this. This is way better now. Blah, blah, blah. You know, that, them guys, you just got to take them with a grain of salt. You know, but I'm telling you, you're better off learning the game and understanding what you're looking at a little while first. If I was getting this, going to really want to get, I would buy me some dogs from good breeders. I would enjoy the fuck out of those dogs. And then I would make my decision in about five years. You know what I'm saying? Whether I wanted to fool with breeding or not. Especially in the way things are now, man. You know, I, I would suggest don't even fuck with breeding dogs. Just enjoy them. There's, it's way cheaper to buy good dogs than to breed your own. I found that out the hard way. But you folks, I wouldn't tell you anything that... I mean, I wish somebody would have went back and told me some of this shit. That's all I'm saying. Y'all take care, y'all keep on bulldogging, stay safe, and keep your head up.